Little Fox. Introducing Doctors Without Borders. <sighs> Jesse dropped his backpack on the kitchen counter with a sigh. His mother looked up from her laptop. Bad day? Sort of, Jesse muttered. Career day is next week, and the principal selected me to introduce one of the speakers. It's an honor to get selected, but I wanted to introduce the professional soccer player, not Dr. Devarty. Really? Jesse's mom sounded surprised. Dr. Devarty has a fascinating career with Doctors Without Borders, and you've known her for years. I know her from our neighborhood, Jesse said. But I don't know anything about her career. Why don't you give her a call and see if you can interview her? His mom suggested. Thirty minutes later, Jesse found himself trudging toward Dr. Devarty's house. Come on in, Dr. Devarty said. My kids are working on their homework, so it's a convenient time to talk. Cool room, Jesse thought as he entered a spacious family room. Tall bookshelves stuffed with books and interesting objects stretched from floor to ceiling. Other shelves held African masks, bronze bells, and dolls dressed in costumes. He picked up a colorful woven basket. That was made by a woman in Sudan, Dr. Devarty said. My first posting after joining Doctors Without Borders was in Darfur, Sudan. Thanks for letting me ask you about Doctors Without Borders, Jesse began. I need to write a brief introduction before you speak at our career day assembly. So I'd like to get some background information. Sure, Dr. Devarty said. Working for Doctors Without Borders has changed my life, and even the way that I practice medicine. Jesse took notes as the physician explained that Doctors Without Borders had been founded in 1971 in France. A group of doctors and journalists were troubled by the way politics sometimes interfered with aid for victims of disaster and disease. So the group decided to create a new relief organization that could deliver free and rapid medical care to people affected by war, epidemics, and disasters. In 1999, the organization received the Nobel Peace Prize. Doctors Without Borders is known as Médecins Sans Frontières in some parts of the world. Dr. Devardi went on, It's an impartial humanitarian organization, which means we treat people without considering things like race, religion, or politics. Are all the workers volunteers? Jesse asked. No, everyone has to apply to work for Doctors Without Borders and get hired. You're paid a salary and there are some requirements. For example, you have to be able to travel on a mission for 9 to 12 months at a time. You also have to possess the right personality and be flexible. Workers often face hardships, like living on a boat in a war zone or in a city destroyed by an earthquake. Doctors and nurses see many heartbreaking situations, so you also have to be able to cope with that. And it's an asset if you're proficient in more than one language. Wow, Jesse said. That sounds intense. Dr. Devardi nodded. It's dangerous too, especially when you're working in a war zone or treating patients with deadly infectious diseases like cholera. Jesse skimmed his notes. You said Doctors Without Borders delivers rapid medical care, but its patients live all over the world. How can medical workers get to these places quickly? Good question. Doctors Without Borders has over 30,000 workers in about 70 countries. And there are hubs all over the world, so they can mobilize medical teams quickly and efficiently. The hubs are stocked with reserves of prepackaged kits containing medicine and supplies even inflatable tents for surgical procedures. Whoa, Jesse said. You can perform surgery outdoors in the middle of a disaster area? Dr. Devardi nodded. We sure can. It allows us to save many lives. What was the hardest mission you've ever been on? Jesse asked. 
Hmm. Dr. Devardi thought for a moment. Last year, I worked on a medical boat in the Mediterranean Sea. Conditions at sea were rough, and we were treating refugees who had fled their home countries by boat. Many of our patients were kids whose parents had drowned. I see what you mean about heartbreaking, Jesse murmured. I can't imagine losing my parents as well as my home. One final question. What do you like best about working for Doctors Without Borders? Dr. Devardi smiled. That's an easy one. I've traveled all over the world and met lots of interesting people. I've also learned to stay calm in medical emergencies and listen carefully, especially to patients from different cultures. Working for Doctors Without Borders has been very rewarding, and it's made me a much better doctor. Jesse shook his head, awed by what he'd learned about Dr. Devardi's career. Earlier today, he'd been worried about introducing her at the assembly. Now, he was eager to share details about her impressive career. Little Fox